we talk a lot about team chemistry nowadays. You know, I, I listen to um, a lot of people talk about Pochettino Spurs side, and one of the reasons they were so good is the team chemistry they had, a tight knit group. I think Jurgen Klopp has that at Liverpool with without many changes. And a lot is apportioned, a lot of success is actually apportioned to team chemistry now. But this Benitez side in 2005, this Benitez side didn't have a lot of team chemistry and yet was able to win the European Cup. Do we look now and, and analyse things differently and just forget? Because it still existed back then. How do you think Rafa shaped that side to win the European Cup? It was a mixture of things. Uh, and, and a lot of it had to do with the... Um, how the coaching staff maximised the potential of that side. You, you cannot put it any other way. So Rafa Benitez knew what he had in his hands, made it the best it could be. Uh, I think hardly no player from that squad, I'd say 90% of the players in that squad, didn't go into better things. So you are talking about a, a squad that gave absolutely everything. Organised. Uh, he Because he was... Rafa Benitez was at the vanguard of so many things, of... Uh, of uh, of, of an organization, methodology, tactics, was at the forefront of that. One, two things happen when you are at the forefront of that, if you are intelligent and it is, a, uh, it is good decisions that you're taking. One, that because you are ahead of others, you can actually take advantage of that. You can mm -hmm. be cleverer than your opposition, who perhaps has relaxed because he's got uh, more money or don't think or undermine you or don't think there is so much to put into tactics because you've got the better players. Uh, so you can be ahead of the game if you are intelligent and, and like Rafa always did in his career up till that point and later on as well he um, he didn't always have the best players but he had to do with what, what, what he had and he was always happy with that always pushing for more yes but always happy with that the second thing that happens when you are in the vanguard people laugh at you they don't respect you they think that uh, you are crazy they call you all kinds of names because they don't understand what what are you trying to do? So for Rafa, it helped that uh, whatever he went, he was successful um, uh, up to that point and again later on as well. But he hasn't been treated properly in, in, in England and I would say even in Spain because he has been, and that season shows it, he has been at the forefront of, of a way of playing, of a way of um, uh, looking after the detail, uh, physical preparation, they tried a lot of things, and recently I was with him uh, and Mister for a program for La Liga TV, uh, in which Mister was the, his goal scorer uh, in his third season at Valencia, the second league. And they, we start, started talking about what he was doing at Valencia just before coming into Liverpool, and it was unique in many ways. Him, Paco Yesteran, they were actually creating something new. So in Liverpool, he took advantage of all that. Yes, there was some chemistry, but I, th I don't think. For Rafa, and that comes by his own nature, uh, creating a world in which there's a synergy and like club you're describing or Pochettino, it's perhaps not his priority. He's not like that. He's, he's, he's uh, cold in the way he thinks. And sometimes some players will tell you a little bit distant, but he gets the best out of them. Uh, I haven't, I don't know if Steven Gerrard has said it yet, but his best seasons were with Rafa in charge, oh. weren't they? Uh, yeah. So I, I think he will admit that, even though at the time I know and you know that he wasn't particularly happy in the way he was treated. But so that's what, what Rafa Benitez has brought to uh, did bring to Liverpool. And of course, you need a lot of things more: the right goal at the right time. You know, uh, three goals against Olympiacos, uh, not to concede in Stamford Bridge. Uh, you know, three goals in six minutes and in Istanbul. All the things have to happen as well for success to arrive. Were you in Istanbul? Yeah. Oh yeah. What? Where does that rank yeah. with the games that you've been to? Uh, I'll put it there with uh, South and Worden. I'll put it there with uh, <laughs> the uh, World Cup final. I was in Johannesburg, and I'll put it there with either of the Espanol Cup finals. I mean, we don't win anything, but in in the early two thousands, we uh, we won two cups. So that was that was massive too for us. 
And and just just before we start to talk a little bit more about you and, and what you've been doing and, and journalism as a whole, um, Gillum, Rafa Benitez obviously had an, another. Well, he had an outstanding few years. Obviously, we have the, the West Ham Cup final in two thousand six. We have two thousand eight, two thousand nine, where we were sensational, uh, and then it, it kind of unravelled after that season over the course of two or three years. I mean. What? Where, where did it go wrong for Rafa Benitez at Liverpool, if indeed it did actually go wrong, other than... Because it wasn't... I don't think it was his fault that his tenure came to an end, but it did come to an end, didn't it? Yes, I think everything has to come to an end. Uh, and it's important to choose when you end it. And perhaps if he went back, he may have left a little bit earlier, but or maybe not, because he has always said that he still had a lot to give to uh, to Liverpool. But players that had been in that period will tell you that uh, that that perhaps it was it was time for a change. But it wasn't helped was it, by the uh, by the situation at at the top on the ship, by the uh, backstabbing, by the mm. running of the club with some people that have shown. Um, now you've seen it in hindsight, but there were the wrong people at the club at the wrong time. So a lot of things that he had to battle with, which um, which which tired him. And tied and broke relationships as well. It was a tense situation. It was it was a frustrating time for Liverpool, as everybody remembers, because you want Liverpool to be in a place where they couldn't have been. They couldn't be at that place, but you're still demanding them to be. So the nobody wanted to see the reality of it. And when Rafa Benitez put it in front of people, they just didn't want to listen. Liverpool couldn't compete. As simple as that. And if he had had the um, the money that has been available after that, who knows what could have happened. I still feel that there's a bit of an unfinished business there. And I would like to see Rafa at some point to return, but I don't know if time it will allow it. Um, and I don't know if that's the thing that Liverpool needs. I don't know. But it does, does have the feeling, uh, that story of, a, of unfinished business. This was somebody that loved the club, that absolutely loved the city and still loves the club, of course. Then, did everything for the club to go to a new level, took the club to another level. And at the time where things so the easier thing is just to okay, get rid of sorry. the uh, of the manager. Okay, girls. The post oh, the back. Uh, yeah, they're coming. Come over here, Robin. Come on. Come in. Lyra, come on you. What's happened? The postman's been. Yeah. Come here. Say hello to Gillum. Hello. <laughs> All right. Come, come on, Lyra. Hello. Right, the postman's been, has he? Yeah. Okay, say hello to Gillum. Hi. All right. <laughs> You're right. You're okay. Yeah. yeah. We right, are close, girls. but we're not that close. I'm in Spain. He's in Spain. He's in Spain. Yeah. Very yeah. far. Okay, thank you. <laughs> right, we're going to have to put the <laughs> book over there now. And I'll pop you over there. And I'll come down and see you very soon, okay? Thank you for telling me the postman's been. Go on, girls. Daddy, can I open the door? You can. No, no, don't open the door. No, no, I've locked it, sweetie, so you can't get out. I've put it on the catch. Go on, babe. I'll, uh, I'll come and sort it in a minute for you. Love you, girls. Okay, bye. I'm so, it, I'm it. Okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, very patient, very patient, very good. <laughs> Sorry, you were saying. <laughs> no, no, just, just that, that, uh, that, that. It's unfinished business for for Rafa, but it'd be difficult to to see him back. Very very difficult, uh, and and it will end up like this uh, as unfinished business. 